to all the folks who can't make it today. Educators are hard to schedule. <laughs> Uh, so I'd like to welcome everybody to our latest installment of the OER Iowa webinar series. So we hold these regular information sessions for people who are working in various types of open education related practice. So people developing OER, working in open pedagogy, um, developing various resources and platforms. Um, if you have topics that you'd like to see covered in these webinars, you can always send us um, a message through the Iowa OER Google group chat. I'll post the link to that in the chat as soon as our presenters get started. Um, but you can always reach out to us with any kind of topic ideas or if you have something you'd like to share or maybe are interested in hosting a webinar, just, uh, just let us know and we'd be happy to set that up. My name is Mariah Burnett and I'm the Scholarly Communications Librarian at the University of Iowa. And I'm joined today by two Department of Ed K-12 representatives, Tina Wallert and Christy Donald who will be demonstrating and discussing the department's e-learning central platform, which aids Iowa students, educators, and families in gaining access to important educational materials. Uh, Tina Wallert currently serves as an administrative consultant in the Bureau of School Improvement at the Iowa Department of Education. Tina has been in the education field for 36 years, and her prior experience includes being a consultant for the Green Hills AEA, as well as a classroom teacher in K-12 special ed, English language arts, and technology. She holds master's degrees in education and educational administration. And Christy Donnell currently serves as an education program consultant in the Bureau of Information and Analysis Services at the Iowa Department of Ed. Christy has been in education for 22 years and some of her prior experience includes secondary mathematics teacher, adjunct instructor in mathematics and curriculum, school improvement leader and secondary mathematics coordinator. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics Education from Drake University and a Master's in School Mathematics from Iowa State and an Educational Specialist degree in Educational Leadership from Drake University. So it's term, in terms of the format of this webinar, we'll keep the microphones muted um, until the chat period at the end of the session. But um, if you do have questions in the meantime, you can always type them into the chat and we can kind of find a, a good time to, to have, have those questions answered. Um, so this whole session will be recorded for sharing out, as I mentioned. So um, we are recording now and you can I'll also drop the link to our uh, YouTube channel so that you can access this video after it's done. Um, and I will now turn it over to our presenters. Okay, thank you. Christy's gonna go ahead and share here. I'm gonna get us started. Um, as we're going along, you can put questions in the chat and whoever is not speaking will try to address those or we'll circle back to them when we're done. Okay, so what we wanna to cover today is we're gonna talk a little bit about what Iowa um, eLearning Central is. Christy, thank you. We often share our, our thinking here, so I'm glad you're anticipating my move. Um, what Iowa eCentral is, how it can help students, educators, and families. We're going to preview the website, which is up with a lot of content coming very, very, very soon, and the components of Iowa eLearning. This is just a little bit of background information. I'm not gonna read that to you, but um, the department received um, funding through a grant, which is the um, Rethink K-12 Education Models Grant. It was only available to state departments. And so um, we were happy to get this. I'm gonna go ahead, Christy, and just go on. So that, that information's there for you and we'll be glad to share our slides with you as well. The reason that we applied for that grant is during the pandemic, it really um, exasperated um, and really made it come into view that there were some inequities in um, the opportunities that students had, especially when they were not in the school building in learning the Iowa academic standards. So um, the reason that this grant was applied for is to try and reduce those inequities for students. And no matter if we're in a, you know, completely at home setting, a hybrid setting, or even in the classroom, we just wanna make sure that all kids are prepared and have access to those standards. And um, the other rationale was that we thought this was a really good opportunity for working collaboratively across our state, teacher to teacher, 
um, to promote the evidence-based curriculum, instruction, assessment practices, and um, work with families just as a state educational system. So I'm going to just preview a little bit of what Christy's going to go a little deeper into here, but we wanted to point out some of the benefits for each of these groups. So teachers will have access to this online um, material. Right now we focused on middle school through high school, but we are going to kick off a great big <laughs> Um, amount of work this summer in the K through five arena. So um, it is developed, all of the um, courses are developed by Iowa educators with a lot of support around them. And Christy will go into the details of how that worked. We also have a section that's in the website that will be um, really focused on families and how they can use these resources um, to support their students. We have um, students are going to benefit from this because one of, well, different parts. Number one, just those inequities that I spoke about. It will definitely help in that arena. Also, regardless of where they live, if schools are opened or closed, they would have access to all of this. And then um, communities, we've put out surveys, just um, getting feedback and what actually is needed. So we continue to um, ongoingly check with um, the stakeholders to see how we can better develop this. A couple resources that we have, one is the um, Iowa e-learning fact sheet. It's just, uh, we call it a one pager, but we get by with that because it'd be printed on both sides. It's really two pages, I believe. But it, it gives all the basic facts around Iowa e-learning and just a short um, uh, glance. And then we have the Iowa e-learning website, which is live and will be going more live with additional content. Um, we're hoping in the next week or so. So with that, Christy, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you to go a little bit deeper here. Thank you, Tina. Um, there are, as we look at the Iowa eLearning Central platform, there will be three main areas that I'm gonna dive a little further into. Um, the one that we probably know the most about, Tina and I, because of, of being the content co-leads is the course repository, which is where the online content is going to live. Um, there is a component for resources and supports for educators and families. And then the student course exchange will probably be one of the last components that will come on. Um, it's a little trickier um, with the logistics and matching um, students and schools with courses. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that means here in a little bit. So here's what um, our eLearning Central website looks like. Um, you can go to it when we share the slide deck. We'll have the, the link is live at the top where you can go on and you can see what is there. You can not access a lot right now, as Tina said, um, we're really, really close. We keep getting updates of when it's gonna go live. So I, I don't have the live date quite yet for you, but you will notice that um, there are some main sections along the bottom of the screen. You'll see these are the resources when we talk about for educators, for students and for families. Um, this is where you would go to get those resources. Um, across up at the top in the upper right hand side, you'll see the course repository where um, you can see there are featured courses right here, but you can see um, a description for all courses that are available right now. Um, and then there will be directions also on how to download the course content. What you obviously see is missing is that um, exchange piece. Because like I said, that one's going to take a little bit more logistics maneuvering for us to be there. So we look at the resources part. Um, a lot of care has, has gone into this and we're still working on, on um, how we want to deliver it. So it's just not all text. I believe there's some work on even um, videos, trying to get students as part of this project and helping us out as well. Students talking to students instead of, we know 
if students are looking at a video of us adults, they're like, what are they talking about? But sometimes another student talking to a student, totally get it. And we all know how that how that goes. So uh, when we look at the supports for educators, this is supporting them delivering online classes. So we're really trying to think of what supports would they need. So maybe some possible checklists for how to prepare for online classes, um, how to prioritize and get things done, and how to help thrive in an online class. So those are the resources, some of the resource topics that will be available for educators. Students really trying to gear it towards them. Okay, they're involved in an online class. Well, how do I survive? How do I thrive in an online class? We know that is way different than being in person. Um, I, I don't know how many of you have had experience with that online class. It's different. Speaking with my own daughter who um, had her first year of college last year with mostly online classes, it was a learning curve for her. And there's a lot of things they have to learn to negotiate, not just the learning in the class. And so these are some helpful tips to them. How do they build a sense of community? How do they connect to other students in the class? Right? If we're studying something difficult and when we're in class, I can easily say after class, hey, do you want to form a study group? But how do I do that in an online environment and how do we connect, right? Um, increased motivation and organization. How do I keep everything uh, moving forward in the class? How do I keep track of everything I need to do? Uh, I think it's easier for in an online environment for uh, deadlines to get away from us a little bit sometimes than it can be when I'm right there having to be in person. And how to practice self-care. Families is another important piece. Um, how can they support their student? Right? They may be going, okay, my student's in an online class, they're stressed, how can I help support my child as they're working in this online class? So things like creating a study area, um, again, going back to that organizing time and schedules, how to help them stay motivated, what to do when they're struggling, um, and ways to connect with the teacher. It's a little different with an online class and how am I going to connect as a parent with the teacher when they're not um, seeing them face to face. Parent teacher conferences may be a little different. Um, it all looks different to us parents. So how do we navigate that? And so we're trying to put together some really good resources um, to help them in the moment. Course Repository. As I said, Tina and I are co-leads on the I, Iowa eLearning Central content team. So we see these lists over and over and over again um, on the courses that we are trying to get ready very soon. So these are the ones that as soon as we go live will be available for download and use by teachers. So when we talk about Course Repository and these courses that are available, they can be used the whole goal is we're creating these courses for um, different approaches. It could be completely online. It could be a hybrid situation. The teachers can use them in the classroom. They can be used in any of those scenarios. Um, and we're really trying to work on providing those resources for teachers. Okay, if you're gonna do this online, here's the activity. If you're doing this in class, here's the activity and working towards that. So you'll see we started with secondary, um, first semester classes for math, ELA, and science. Uh, you'll see we've got, for math, you're hitting the, the main big six from secondary, so sixth grade through algebra two. Uh, ELA, we're hitting high school, nine through 12. And science, it's middle school and then biology class. We also have the first semester of computer principles. And, um, a semester of high school financial literacy. Now, what you may be going, Christy, where's social studies? We're working on it. That one's taking a little bit longer, and you can imagine with the content we have for social studies and some of the recent events, um, it takes a little bit longer for social studies to get the content pulled together. Um, that's clearly in our, our, you know, clearly part of our plan. U.S. history and world history are the first two courses we're working on for, for high school history. So what courses will be available? As, as you know, we finish those courses, I wanna say we tried to finish those for June the summer. Um, they've kind of taken us a little bit longer because we have a lot of pieces that we go through of, we have a quality control rubric that we use to make sure that 
our courses of our high content and aligned to our Iowa academic standards. Um, so the, the review takes a little bit of time making sure all the pieces are in place and everything is ready to go. Um, we also have to check our links and all of those good pieces in there, proofreading. We're also partnering with Iowa State University. They help us with instructional design. So these courses are going through a few different layers of review before they get posted and out there for educators to use. So currently, uh, Tina and I are still working with, we've got two different sets of um, educators working on courses right now. Um, so we're looking at another group of courses trying to be finished up in the next couple months. And then we've got another set that'll be later um, this spring. So those courses we had on the previous slide, first semester, we're finishing the second semester. We've added middle school ELA. Um, there's the social studies, world history, US history, and middle school social studies courses. For science, we're working on chemistry and physics. Uh, Spanish one, I know that is a, a big demand out there amongst our Iowa public schools about needing Spanish one. We're very fortunate to find um, an educator to develop for us. Physical education, we are working on a couple courses, semester long courses for physical education at the high school level. We've got a course for high school business, high school family consumer science. Um, elementary, uh, we will start work in the summer of 2022. When I get to the next slide, I'll, I'll talk about our big need and, and go ahead and, and preview our ask that will be coming out before we know it. Um, for elementary. We will be working on additional middle school courses such as PE, FCS, health, <clears throat> those elective areas, um, as well as other courses that are needed by the field. I know one of those things that Tina talked about was surveying our community and the needs out there. We will continue to do so to find out after courses get out and people start using the courses, what additional courses do you need? Um, so that, we, that way we're making sure that we are meeting the needs of the field. Now they'll be able to download these courses through um, our Iowa Educator Portal is what they'll have to go through in order to download the courses. So it's not that I go straight to the Iowa eLearning Central website and say, I can just download the course. They're gonna have to have an account in Iowa Educator Portal to have access to the course. It's partly due to we want to make sure we have some security around some of the assessments that are involved in our courses. When to put some numbers, I'm a math person. I got to put some numbers behind this a little bit. So how many Iowa educators have we worked with and are we planning to work with? Because when we wrote this, this is um, courses written by Iowa educators for Iowa educators. So this is really important piece to it. Up to this point in time with the current, um, including the previous round and the current rounds we're working on for content development, we are working with 34 content developers across our state. Now some developers are writing more than one course for us, um, but that's 34 educators that we're working with and supporting and managing through the process. On top of that, we've also hired content reviewers um, that are specifically looking at all the courses for alignment to our standards, making sure learning progressions are good. They're looking from that content lens. And I have 22 plus because the very first round we used some state leadership teams to help us with that. And I don't have a number from that, but I can say we've got 22 right now, plus whoever we had in round one from our leadership teams. Future needs, this is a big number. <laughs> It's a little bit of a scary number. Uh, we want approximately 300 educators to work with us next summer. So uh, the reason why that number is so large is we are going to tackle elementary a little differently than we did with secondary. Secondary, we hired developers to develop a whole semester course. We wanna hire um, elementary educators to work on a unit or two instead. So we're doing unit development versus course development this summer focused on uh, K through five, math, um, ELA, science, social studies, and um, some additional course support as well. So with that, we've got our developers. So by the time you count how many units we have for a year, and we're wanting to get as many um, teachers involved as possible, 
And then on top of that, we want um, to hire some content experts to support work from a content scope and sequence perspective to making sure that we're strong. If we have so many people working on units, we need someone to support to make sure um, it makes sense and everyone's working towards our, our common scope and sequence for all those courses. So that's a lot. Uh, with that, we hope to bring them all together to be in person with us in July for three days of, of learning and work with us um, before they join us as our partners ISU put together an online um, workshop that they will go through about developing online instructional um, activities and courses. Student course exchange. This one I think is exciting when we think about the state of Iowa. Um, I graduated from a very small school district in Southern Iowa. Um, and I remember as a student not having access to all the courses that I wanted to have access to. And I really think that the student course exchange to me is exciting for those rural, um, rural schools to have, to get access for courses to students that they have in their school that need it. So how this kind of works, kind of think of it as a match program. <laughs> I have a student that needs a certain class. There is another school that has a seat for in an online class that they need. We can match them together. The student can then take the class through the other school. So we're not you know, saying, well, we just can't get you that class. Well, let's see what other schools can, can meet your needs to help you get that, that course. Um, so the example, again, I use my math background, pre-calculus. Um, I'm a student at school A, or there's a school A has an open seat in an online pre-calculus class. I'm in school B who can't offer a pre-calculus class, but I'm gonna take it through school A. That's why you can start to see that takes a little more logistics for us to figure out how to get everyone communicating and matched and, and connected. So um, I, don't have a timeline on that, but that is a component that'll probably come a little bit later um, as we've talked and, and had conversations. Okay, I think I'm turning it back over to Tina. Yeah, and before um, I talk about this, a few things I thought of while you were talking, Christy, and you mentioned briefly our collaboration with Iowa State University, and we have a great team from there. Um, that is working with us on the instructional design piece. So what we're doing is really hiring the content experts, folks that are um, teaching right now, or they have taught in that area and have a deep understanding of the standards. And then um, what, as they develop their, um, they submit that to Iowa State through Canvas is the platform that we're using. And they give feedback around instructional design to make their, sure things are consistent, to make sure they're usable, just that um, they're following all the best practices. So um, when we first started out, they didn't have the workshops for us yet. And because we got going a little late, no fault of theirs. But um, the, now folks can go through those prior to that. So they have a whole lot of learning instead of just getting their learning and their feedback. So that's been a good collaboration for us. Um, the other thing that I was thinking about is the content that's being developed is um, student facing. So it's a course that students engage in, or if you're downloading the resources into your own system, it's for students to use. But also um, after round one, we realized there was a really big need also for the teacher materials that, was a, that were accompanying the course. So we basically doubled the contracts and asked our teachers, are you willing to do student facing and are you willing to um, develop the set of teacher materials that um, face that? Um, I see a question come in from Deborah that I'm going to answer. She um, asked about um, if they would be self-paced. So the way that we're setting them up is a student could do that. We're guessing that in most cases they would be utilized with the teachers um, facilitating, but um, Iowa State has really helped us say, we need it for every, this to be usable for every format. If a student was working through it independently, 
clear to if it was something that was being downloaded that teachers were going to utilize in a face-to-face -face setting. So that, that has been our plan. And then the last thing I was going to add is in the website when you get there, and I did drop the link in for the slide deck so you can click on that. Um, Connor Hood is working on that project with Tiffany Morgan from Iowa PBS. And Connor had mentioned this morning that, Christy, can you go back to slide seven a minute? There you so, go. Yeah, so Connor said um, when this goes live, hopefully in the next week or so, where it um, shows like four educators, four students, four families, um, those will all become live links. So what you're gonna see right now is not live link, but when it does, it um, will go live there. And Christy, because I was writing some of this down, did you talk about um, this living behind the portal? Yep, I did. Okay. Very but good. I, I did want to add, because um, this is this is what it is good about us co-presenting. We help remind each other of different aspects. We live this so much day to day, we forget to what all we can share here. Um, that when they're downloading their common cartridges, uh, the courses are packaged in common cartridges, working hopefully in different LMS systems. Um, there may be some components we are creating in Canvas, but so there may be some components that don't work fully when you when you open it in another LMS, but we are working, I know Tiffany is working hard with us on testing it in some of the, the most used platforms across our state, um, just to be ahead of that and to troubleshoot that ahead of time um, as we move forward. Okay, okay Christy, if you wanna go back to slide 13, um, Really what this is, is just the folks that are sort of on the front line of this work. We've got a lot of people behind the scenes. As Christy said, we are co-leading the content. Um, and we've got um, Stacy Stokes and Gwen are sort of our project managers. And we just always have to put Eric in here because when you're dealing with so many contracts with educators, we've got to give a shout out to Eric. And then on the next slide, those are our content consultants at the department that are assisting our content developers and with um, contents they're working with. And we wouldn't be able to move forward without all of them. They keep the, they're the direct content with content or contact with content developers. And um, just actually watching and reading some of our emails this morning, the communication that they are, are they do on a really regular basis to keep our content developers moving forward, encouraging them, answering their questions, um, giving them all the support that they need. So um, at this point, um, we've just got the link there and our contact information. Um, our colleague, April Ford, our math consultant was supposed to be with us today and um, she was ill. So we just wanted to, we had her name on here as well. She helped us put things together. But at this point, uh, we just wanted to see if there were questions that we could feel. Um, you're welcome to just unmute yourself and ask questions if you have those. I have a question. Is this content then OER? So can it be used in that OER fashion or is it copyrighted? That's a great question, Denise, and you brought up a good reminder too that um, <clears throat> for most courses, the, the developers are starting with an OER to begin with and then adapting the OER for online because um, a lot of the OER materials we're using were not created for online instruction and learning. Um, so they're adapting. If they don't have an OER, they're creating from scratch, but we are because of the grant and because we want Iowa educators to use this, um, you will see in the description for each course what the um, Creative Commons license is. And so we are um, using the Creative Commons licensing um, so that educators can use it, adapt it, adjust it. Um, once they download, it's theirs to, to do with as they see is best fit for their students. I have another question. Um, yep. So you said the uh, portal is for educators. Does that include AEA consultants as well? 
Yes, AA consultants are in the portal. Tina, which credentials are we using to log into that? Do you know? Because I've tried once or twice and I'm not sure. It's, is there a is there a create an account somewhere? For the portal? Um, yeah. You know, I guess when I worked at the AA, I just always had an account. Um, if you don't, I I guess. So it's using our AEA credentials? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's what I always did with um, Portal. And of course, remember, if you log in now, you're not, if you log into the portal now, you're not going to see these courses, but um, very soon you will. So if you log in and you're saying, well, I'm not seeing anything here soon. Well, and you'll need access. Um, that's the, the thing about Iowa Educator Portal. Um, you know, we only have access to certain things within the portal. And so once we go live and you know that it's out there, you'll need to request through your own processes um, in your organization to gain access to that. Do the AEAs have access to that process yet? So I understand that just last week um, they were working on writing up those directions so that when you do log in, it would give you how to do that and you're not trying to figure it out. Uh, so those thank will you. come at the same time that it goes live. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? If folks on this call are interested in um, joining as contributors, um, is that something people can sort of just reach out to you or you do you have your contributors already? Good, good question. Um, so something to look for, and this is why I love any opportunity I can to plug this a little bit. Uh, as I said, we're gonna be looking for lots of, of educators to support us in the work upcoming work. Um, we do this all through the informal bid process at the state level. So there'll be communication coming out. Like the first ones we're gonna hire are content experts um, and that application goal is to go live here in December. Um, so if you're interested in thinking fit best as a content expert in support, um, that will be coming live in December to apply for and we go through a whole application process. And then later, uh, not much later, I think it's February, um, we'll be um, asking for edu developers to apply. So anyone that wants to develop a course to apply, I think in like February is our goal, so. And the way that we got that out before, I was a little worried about things going to spam is it was sent out to everyone that held a current Iowa teaching license at the areas that we were looking for. So. Um, we do know sometimes that goes to spam. So if you're interested, you can always check back, you know, just on the bid website as well. Or you could reach out to us and we can direct you there as well. Mm -hmm. So is this grant, um, is this an Iowa Gear grant? Or is this, I'm, I missed that about where the funding came from at the beginning. Yeah, so it was it's a federal grant okay. and there's it came out of the CARES Act, but the actual part of that was it was um are you going there we go. The rethink K-12 education grants. So it was, you know, it was a very substantial grant which has allowed us to compensate educators nicely for their work. So um, it is, it's worth their time. We've, we've tried to really um, get the grants dollars in the hands of Iowa educators for their work. That makes sense. Anybody else have any questions for our panel today? Well, if there are no more, we can always wrap up a little early today. Um, I'd like to say thanks to Christy and Tina for joining us today. Uh, it's great to see what's kind of being done in the K-12 sphere with, with open educational resources. And I really look forward to seeing some of these courses. Thank so, you. 
Yeah, if, if nobody has any other questions, I'll stop the recording and end the meeting. And I hope everybody has a great weekend.